Are you thinking about switching over to the Robinson curriculum or are you thinking just in general to switch to homeschooling for the next school year? Right now, a lot of parents are thinking about that with all the restrictions and changes that are being put in place with the whole COVID-19 situation. And there are also a lot of parents out there who are just maybe feeling a little bit stressed out, burned out with what they're doing. They see it's not very sustainable in the long run and they're looking for it more simple but effective way to homeschool and that's where the robinson curriculum comes in i can't even tell you the impact that it has had in our home and i cannot imagine homeschooling any other way and i know that is the same story for countless families and so in this video i'm going to give you a really easy guide how to transition from either any other curriculum or from public school how to have a smooth transition to the Robinson curriculum and make sure you stay until the end because we have a very special giveaway. So again, make sure you stay until the end. Hi, my name is Karen and if you're new here, welcome to our house. Uh, the goal of this channel is to help you go from questions to confidence when it comes to homeschooling, especially the Robinson curriculum. So let's just jump right in and give you a game plan how you can transition your child from whatever they were doing before to the Robinson curriculum. Now for those of you that are really unfamiliar with what RC is, it is two hours of math basically one hour of writing and two hours of reading. There's some vocabulary, there's some other resources like spelling, grammar, if you want to use them. Uh, but the main gist is the three R's, really focusing on developing those skills because that is really what's going to um, help them their whole adult life, learning how to learn, learning how to teach themselves. It is a self-taught curriculum. However, I realized even with something so simple, there's still a lot of questions as to how to make the change. So let's talk about math because that's the first component. So how do you transition from whatever you were doing to doing math the RC way, which is typically two hours of Saxon math independently on their own. So the biggest thing you have to keep in mind if you're starting in the younger years is that they need to be able to read really well independently because they're going to just be reading the textbooks on their own, working out their problems. You're not supposed to help them. They're supposed to do this on their own. So they need to be strong readers before they can officially start RC math, the, the math component. Something else that you need to keep in mind is that RC does not go by grade level. So there's no standard of you're this old, you're supposed to be in this Saxon math book. No, it's wherever the student is at. Maybe they're much more ahead and they can complete calculus at 16 or maybe they're further behind and um, they need to go back maybe a book or two to get caught up. It's, there's no point in just putting them in something that they don't understand and they're going to really struggle with and just get farther and farther behind. You know, there's plenty of time if you're just doing three R's a day to get caught up with math. So it's not about, well, he's in fifth grade, he should be doing this textbook. No, the best way to place them is by taking a Saxon math placement test. And I will leave a link in the description below so they can take the test and find out what Saxon math they should be in. Now, the only thing I wanna give you a heads up about on that is that if it tells you Saxon one, Saxon two, Saxon three, RC does not recommend those Saxon math books. The first book that they could recommend using is Saxon five, four. You know, they believe that a seven and eight year old could easily do this book if they are strong readers and they have all their math facts memorized. So that's another thing to keep in mind. If you're starting very early on from the beginning, they need to first work on memorizing all their math math facts before they start this first book, Saxon 5-4. We believe that those earlier books, Saxon 1, 2, and 3, is a lot of busy work that parents are supposed to sit there and complete with the student. Whereas if they just memorize all their math facts, maybe just talk them through a couple other things, they're ready to start just from Saxon 5-4. And I actually have created an RC course for littles that takes you through step-by-step step from counting to starting Saxon 5-4. And I will leave a link for that below also if you wanna check it out. But really where RC picks up is starting with Saxon 5-4. Okay, so let's move on and talk about reading, which is another main pillar, is the two hours of reading a day from the RC book list. So a question that gets asked often is how do I know where to start on this long book list? Because again, it's not divided into any uh, grade levels. It's just a big long list 
and you, it just gets harder as it progresses. So you start at the beginning and then you go through the list. But what if you're jumping in at a later um, age? Where should you place them? So here are a couple of tips when it comes to placing older children. So I really like what Ruth Beachick has to say in this book. Keep in mind that there is independent reading level and instructional reading level. So typically independent, that's you know books that they just read for pleasure on their own free time. Typically those could be maybe two grade levels below their age and that's fine. That's their fun reading, their easy reading. But then you also have instructional reading level, which is kind of where the RC book list comes into play. This is their instructional reading time and it's going to be a little bit more at their level. So a great way to figure out where you should place them with the book list is to pick out a book where you think they might be at pick out about a hundred words in the book, have them read it out loud to you. And if they get more than six wrong, more than 6% wrong, then it's probably a little bit too difficult for them. It's going to be really challenging. So then you can move back a book, try it again. Anything below 94% is considered frustration level. So in those 100 words, keep that in mind. If they get more than six words wrong, might need to move back a book. And it's okay if you place an older child in some of the younger books. For example, this is one of the first books, The Tale of Jolly Robin. And this is actually a really great entertaining read. All the books are. They will learn something and they will catch up really quickly and it just kind of gets them, you know, wetting their appetite when it comes to these types of books. So it's okay if they start out earlier in the list. So that's one way that you can place them using the actual books themselves. But here's another way, and that's with the vocabulary. So one of the most wonderful things about the Robinson curriculum is their vocabulary program. There is a set for each corresponding book and the vocabulary is really excellent. I love the pre-printed cards that are just ready to go. They're coded, they're great for multiple use if you have multiple children. I just love these cards, they save so much time. You can print them, maybe laminate them if you want to, uh, but this just saves so much time and effort. I think if you can only purchase a couple things um, this year for homeschooling, I would recommend the math flashcards and these vocabulary flashcards. It, it just saves so much time and they're so nice to have. So each book has their corresponding cards. I like to put them in just envelopes like this with the book and the book number. And it's really convenient because all the vocabulary cards have the book number here in the corner. And when kids are switching their vocabulary out, I just have them go to where I have all the cards and just take them out of the envelope, put them in a little like pencil case in their little cubby area and leave the envelope there and then they'll put them back. So anyways, how you can use the uh, vocabulary cards to see where they're at in the book list is you take you know a random stack for example this is the first book that has vocabulary book for the life of George Washington and you would just kind of quiz them on the cards and see how many they get right how many they get wrong if they get more than 80% wrong then that book is probably on their frustration level and you need to move back and if they get more than 80% correct then you know that this is probably a book at their reading level. This would be a great place to start. And again, I just wanna mention how much I love these cards. I like to use them myself. So uh, kids are supposed to, you know, kind of just quiz themselves, learn these terms on their own. And there are some resources uh, with the curriculum such as Pages you can print out, word searches, crossword puzzles, matching, but I like to test the kids with them because I want to work, learn the words too. Now for writing, they are supposed to write a page essay every day. They write, you know, we do back and forth double space so that I can provide feedback because then they give it to you. You provide feedback, things they need to work on, they need to change, any spelling errors, and then they either rewrite it or they fix their mistakes. So if you have a child who's just ready to write their own original compositions, even if they only start out with a paragraph or two and they work their way up to a full page, that's great. But if you feel like they're not there yet at that level to write their own material, then you can start them off with copy work. You can choose some of the RC books, you can choose the Bible, you can choose an encyclopedia, whatever you wanna use, let them do some copy work and then after a while of doing that they really will want to write their own material and again I do have an RC course for little where I take you when it comes to writing from learning how to write their ABCs all the way to the daily essay so if you want to check that out that really takes you step by step but RC picks up where they're writing every day so again you can start with copy work and then move on to original composition or if they're you know ready they're older just have them write every day 
and slowly but surely you will see improvements. There's a lot of benefits to this component of RC. And let's talk a little bit about the whole transition period because it could be a lot different from whatever they're doing, maybe a boxed curriculum, maybe it's just a lot of worksheets and they're just filling out blanks or circling errors. You know, now they're writing their own material, they're doing Saxon math, they're reading from two hours from a book list. You know, it could be really different from whatever it is that they're coming from. So, you know, take it easy. Typically it takes about three to six months for a child to build up to it. So don't feel like they have to just have the five hour schedule from the very beginning. A lot of people with the reading try to do maybe 10 minutes per year. So a seven year old would do 70 minutes up to a 12 year old who would then do the 120 minutes. But even if they're already 12 years old, for example, you can work up to that, increase the time every week until they get used to it. And same thing for sex and math. Maybe it might be really difficult for them and it's okay if they just do half a lesson a day. You know, with my children, sometimes they're doing two lessons a day and sometimes they're doing half a lesson a day. It's not, uh, about how smart they are. It's just about how difficult the material is and they're learning how to get through it. And sometimes, you know, they need to slow down to really grasp it and learn it before they move on. I think this is just such a better approach at doing math and they really learn how to kind of self-regulate and when to push themselves and when to slow down. It's really something that carries over in a lot of other aspects in life knowing when to run and knowing when to walk and even knowing when to crawl, but that they keep going. All right, so if you've made it to the end of this video, thank you. Now let's talk about the awesome giveaway. RC is giving away one free year of RC Online. If you're not familiar with RC Online, you know, Robinson Curriculum is a CD disc set, but they've also now gone online. Everything is online. You log into the website, all the contents are there. It makes it very easy to just click on something and print it, very easy to find things. I love that I could just print a book from my phone in bed while I'm drinking coffee. It's really wonderful. So they also have with RC Online, a lot of other bonuses like science monographs. You know, if you need to maybe come up with an official transcript from your state and you need to put something down for science in those early years, you can use the science monographs. They also have Alpha Phonics and Raise Arithmetic all the raised books, which are really great, especially for those younger years. In fact, my RC course for littles just uses those RC online materials and a couple other free things from online. I use Alpha Phonics to teach children how to read and raise arithmetic to also along with their math facts, get them ready for 5-4. So a lot of great stuff there. They're giving away a year free of RC online and all you have to do to be entered is make sure you're subscribed to this channel and also make sure you're subscribed to the RC YouTube channel. So make sure you're subscribed there and just comment down below that you've subscribed and you want to be entered in the giveaway. That's it. And if you are interested in the Robinson curriculum, I highly, highly recommend that you watch Dr. Robinson's video, the talk that he gave on it. I will link it down below. I listen to that pretty much every year. And I also read the course of study for the curriculum pretty much every year. And I always pick up new little things from it or little reminders that I needed because um, let's face it, the homeschool movement is growing and with it, a lot of different curriculum providers and, uh, you know, there's a market for everything and they're going to, they're going to try to sell you on everything. And so it's just a great reminder to keep things simple and that the goal is not just acquiring this vast amount of information. The goal is to teach your children how to learn and how to teach themselves. And then after that, it's just putting great quality material in front of them. And remember that a lot of these curriculum providers, you know, they have to come up with their own copy righted things. So it's things that maybe somebody else is writing about history versus the Robinson curriculum is giving you a book list of the people who lived through that history, through those events. And um, they can't copyright those classics, right? And you have them, all the books with RC online and the CDs. All you have to do is print them out. So that's it for this video on how to transition smoothly over to the Robinson curriculum. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And again, if you wanna be entered for that year of free RC online, just subscribe here, subscribe to RC and comment below that you did that. 
And if maybe you can share this video and help spread the word, I would really appreciate it. I'm just trying to get the message out. I feel like a lot of parents still don't know about this option and it's really great for working parents or single parents or moms that have a lot of children, especially a lot of young children, anybody really. So I would appreciate if you could help me get the word out. Thank you so much for watching and I will be announcing the winner in one week from today. So don't forget to enter right away. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in another video. Bye.